Okay, so this is the first part of uh, the box sorter that we're going to look at. And for this, this will probably be two parts. One is just the first part where I'm just going to walk through, um, come on, what programs, we, what we need to do. And when we go in here, and we'll get into our sorting, the first thing to do is to dock all the tags and then get rid of anything that's on. And I think it's a good thing, well, I'm going to do two things. Um, I'm going to make this about as big as I can. I can get rid of these guys. And then I'm going to try to move the screen around so I can get a better view of it. And if I'm at kind of an angle, and then zoom in a little bit, um, that kind of gives me a pretty good view. Now, the other thing is, because I've cleared the tags, I can go also go in here. I can take a look at my sensors. Um, and, well, the first thing, we can also go in and look at the drivers. And we can put in our um, Allen Bradley MicroLogics. And here, because this is something that we've been doing in class, it does have the uh, 1100. But you can see the state of the input signals. And we'll take a look at the um, dock tags. And you can see all of our sensors, high, low, palette, and this loaded, which is our capacitive sensor at the end of the diverter, they're all deactivated or in the, you know, in a low logic or low voltage level. But all these at signals are high. Um, the start is low, the stop is high, and that's kind of typical. But we can also see that these at signals are all high. All our actuators are off. And um, the other signals where we have uh, the low sensor is low, the high sensor is low, and the pallet sensor is low. So that is a pretty good thing that we need to know. Now we had been going through this in class, so we know that the first thing is we've got to force the emitter on, and uh, we'll put this in run mode, and then we've got to force the entry conveyor on, and then we're going to turn this off. And now we're going to get to the end and we're going to look at these sensors. And we can see that the sensors go high. Now this is a high box and actually you're going to find more high boxes than low boxes. So we can, you know, keep resetting. Um, that's about all we do at the start of this. But we want to see what we need to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to put on our emitter. We're going to turn on our conveyor entry. We're going to go down all the way until the end and then we're going to slow motion and see what happens right here. And we're going to take a look at these sensors. So this is a uh, high box, I think, too. So we're going to be looking at what sensors. So actually, and the pallet goes first. And then our low sensor and our high sensor both go on at the same time. So that's something we need to know. Now right here, when those sensors go on, to keep it going forward, We've got to turn on our load. And that should get us, well, I'm going to speed it up, all the way into our points. Now, we can release this guy, release this guy, and I'm not quite sure why the emitter wasn't released. And now we need to determine, well, we know we're going left or up in the screen. So now we need this thing called transfer left to go. So we're going to make it transfer left and then we want to see what signals happen. And we have, since we are going left, we know we have this left exit and left entry. And that's what we want to look and see what happens when we turn on or force on the transfer left. And so right there we can see at left entry went from high to low. And that's important when, to know the logic of that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the conveyor left and we're going to force that on. Um, and actually we can kind of release this and we can just turn this on and see if the transfer left by itself and it kind of looks like it does push it far enough to where if we just turn on the conveyor it can go so let's take a look at what happens when we just force this on um, and it does go by itself and now we can see that the act left exit turned on. So, um, 
and actually if we look at it what happened is because we didn't use our remover circuit it spilled itself on the floor so um, we can kind of go back to where we started and now try to develop this so we're going to release everybody and as we walk through it we'll turn on the emitter turn on the conveyor entry, turn off the emitter and now this is a high box 2 so now when we get to this point we're going to hit the load now we're going to turn these guys off we're going to force the transfer left on and now we can release it now actually what happens is when you turn on the transfer left this signal at left entry goes low so what we're going to do is when that signal goes low we're going to turn on the conveyor left we're going to force it on and get rid of that guy get rid of that guy so when we see this signal go from high to low that's when we're going to turn on the conveyor left and we'll force it on here and now we're going to go in slow motion because what we want to do is we want to take a look at these signals and we want to see when it gets to the left entry we're going to have to do the remover left circuit so we gotta figure out when we need to turn it on and here we're going to be looking for it to go from high to low and it should happen that's a retro reflector so let's see what happens if we turn it on right here um, it's starting to make it disappear and that looks like what we can do now when we turn on this remover left now we can it's gone and now we can turn these guys off but now this remover left circuit we can also use that to bring in our second box so when this is active or maybe when we finish activating it we're ready to turn it off then when we turn this off we can do our another second box with our emitter to drop the second box and also to count the count and so I'm going to write this down on a piece of paper and I'm going to be using the signal levels whether they go from high to low or low to high and we're going to come up with a sequential chart and then we're going to uh, come up with kind of a, a timing diagram it's not really a timing diagram it's more like a timeline of when events happen and then we're going to write the program code and that'll be in the second part and you know we don't have to or I'm not going to write the code right now as I'm going through it because most of these for this project are really simple latches this happens I turn this on another thing happens I turn it off and I turn something else on and those are all simple latches and you know you get to a point I mean I guess I've written a few more programs than most of you but uh, where you just have these things and say okay when I need this type of latch here's the circuit I'm going to use and it doesn't matter uh, you know we want to keep it simple so what we do is we create what needs to happen that cause and effect diagram and then we just uh, pick our little latching circuits out of our toolbox and just pick and choose the ones we know work and uh, see what happens so next time out we'll take a look at that so uh, we'll have that up and uh, take care see ya